It's time to look ahead to the Junior Eurovision Song Contest 2017. I will talk um, about that contest with Steve van Gorkum, who has been in Georgia all week. Um, uh, Steve, yeah, time to look ahead for the for the last time almost. Um, who do you think are, are in there to win it this year? Well, before the contest, uh, we've heard a lot about Belarus being one of the favorites. And then when we saw them on the first rehearsal, they did indeed deliver. And... Um, it was it, it was great, you know. It was great to see it because it was staged almost uh, of adult quality, basically. When I looked at the first shots of that rehearsal, it was almost as if Sasha Jean Baptiste had joined the Junior Eurovision Song Contest. You know, the staging director yeah. from Bulgaria last year, among others, who we've uh, who we've interviewed as well on ESC Daily. She's always about these mysterious, dark acts. If you haven't heard the Belarusian entry yet, it's a very um, it's a it's a song in her genre basically, and it's it's very well staged as well. It's a dark stage. She's uh, wearing a pink cape, which interacts sort of with the with the pink backdrop. Um, and and you, but you have to see it for yourself. It's it's really well done. It has these flashed camera shots, uh, same style as as Human from Oscar Zia Melody Festival a couple of years ago. If people remember that, it's all really really uh, really strong. Then um, a country who popped itself into the top category, in my opinion, in this week is Malta as well. Malta, of course, the host of last year. Um, completely different genre, much more of a fun kid song, uh, but also very well staged, very well delivered uh, by a 10-year-old kid who knows to how to handle the cameras, who knows how to dance, and, um, and who has a megaphone on the catwalk during the last part of the song. And it's all, it's all very cheerful. Talking about Belarus at the Junior Eurovision, it seems like they they're always on top of their game, always having good results. At the adult version of the contest, they're they're struggling the last couple of years. That that's that's an interesting fact, I think. It is, and um, we've been talking about it a lot in the press center here as well. Um, how how that's possible? Because it's uh, it's the same team working on those Eurovision entries. It may just be that's what uh, you and Spence told me in an interview as well. Uh, it may be that Belarus has a little bit more freedom on this Junior Eurovision Song Contest because it doesn't have that political attention uh, to it that adult uh, the, the adult competition sometimes has. And it may be that Belarus is maybe a little bit too eager to do well at adult Eurovision, uh, creating things that just aren't there, um, coming up with the idea of the naked wolves on stage and whatever, all, all, all to make something bigger than it actually is. While here at Junior, they're just here to give a good performance, basically, and to stick to what they know and to keep it more simple. But it, at the same time, then, that can be better sometimes. Then again, if you look at um, last year's performance from Belarus in adult Eurovision, obviously Navi Band did really well. And that was a more simpler song, but also a more simpler performance. So it may just be that Belarus is learning from their junior European experience. It just takes them some time. So you've mentioned Malta, you've mentioned Belarus, of course. Um, what about Australia? Are, are they in for their first uh, Eurovision win, perhaps? I'm slowly warming up to the idea of that. Um, when I came here... Uh, I was, of course, uh, supporting the Australian entry. I was, I was happy that they were competing again. I heard the song. I thought it was good. It was, actually, it's a good combination this year of, at the same time, doing what Australia has done for years, sending a, a very mature girl with a mature and 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 pop-friendly uh, written song, combining that with the kid vibe this year a little bit more than the previous two years, I would say, in the performance. Um, then again, I wasn't so sure coming here whether it would go as high as I do think now because I've seen both rehearsals and it just gets better and better. During the first round, they were working mostly on camera angles and they were trying out, I guess in five run-throughs, they've done five different things. You know, no, not a single camera shot almost was the same. And then after that, in the viewing room, they reviewed all of it and they thought really well about what they wanted to do. And yesterday they came back. And not only the camera work was good, but she was just amazing. They did one run-through on backing tape to save her vocals, and the other ones were live. And we just could not hear the difference. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty impressive, and, and something that could work in their favor in uh, the new voting system as well. 
Yeah, especially with the jury vote, of course. I actually um, told my colleagues when we were when we were watching the Australian rehearsal last night, if this was last year, if this performance would have been last year with a 100% jury vote, I would have said Australia would maybe... I would maybe have called Australia one of the top favorites to win this contest. But for me, it's very difficult to judge what the new voting system is going to do. Obviously, there still is a 50% jury vote. I think Australia has a very good chance of winning that vote, actually, uh, like Dami In did uh, in Stockholm. But then there's this online voting, which is too unpredictable for me at the moment uh, to say if they can do well there as well. Yeah, because it's a, it's a new future. Is it something you think they're also trying out to perhaps in the future uh, um, uh, do that at Adult Eurovision as well? They are. Um, uh, I asked Jon Ola Sant this yesterday. It, 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 the interview that we had with Jon Ola will be up on ESC Daily uh, in the upcoming days. But yes, I can already tell you that he told me this is a tryout. This is a tryout for the adult contest. And why? Well, very simply because online voting is the future. Um, the Eurovision Song Contest has had televoting for a long time because at that moment television was the newest thing still in town and, and people picked up the phone and called to the television station and that's still how Eurovision works. In Lisbon, that's still how it's going to work. It's not going to be an online voting in Lisbon, but in the future they will want to switch to, at least partly, to online voting. And that's why this year Junior Eurovision is a tryout. But it's also a difficult tryout because they're still struggling to see how are we going to do that. Tough online, you can geo-block them. You can control who is voting from which country. And then you can also check that people are not voting for their own country. Online, that's a bit more difficult, and that's why in this year's system, in this test at Junior, you are allowed to vote for your own country. But that's, of course, you know, a, a risk as well. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So, uh, finally, let's put a gun to your head. Who will win the Junior Eurovision Song Contest in Georgia? Right now, I would say Malta. But Australia is definitely a contender, and everyone from uh, who watches and follows ESC Daily should watch this Junior Eurovision, even if you didn't follow it in previous years, because it could be, if something crazy happens, it could really be such a wonderful moment. It could potentially be Australia's first ever Junior Eurovision victory.